All right, so check me out with this one. Um, actually, I want to talk about the quadratic formula. And this guy is an extremely important thing that you will need to know, regardless of how long you guys go through math, you need to know the quadratic formula. And <laughs> the way that I learned it way back in the day was so that everybody has their method, right? So we're, we're basically talking about solving these type of quadratic equations, right? Where we have three terms, they're in standard form, they're set equal to zero, it's already set up. We use the quadratic formula. And <clears throat> the way that I memorized it was, <laughs> it was a song using, um, what was it? Row, row, row your boat, right? So everybody I think knows the theme song to row, row, row your boat. So here we, <laughs> x equals, so here's the song, x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is how I memorized the quadratic formula. Like I said, obviously it was way back in the day because I'm using row, row, row your boat. However you need to, there are different tricks. This is how it works for me. So. You guys can sing it with me one more time. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. That is my quadratic formula. So I'm going to do the same problems that I did before, right? I did these by completing the square. We got these solutions. I'm going to do those same problems now by the quadratic formula. And we'll see that we get the same answer. So. We need to identify A, B, and C, right? As long as we're in standard form and set equal to zero. A is the coefficient of X squared, B is the coefficient of X, and C is the constant by itself. Take the signs with it. Then write down your quadratic formula. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. And then plug and chug. That's as easy as plug and chug, as they say. The opposite of B. So B is negative 10. So take the opposite of that. Plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. Plug it in and then simplify. That's it. So Order of operations under the square root first, we do the squared case. Negative 10, the quantity squared is positive 100. And then, so negative four times one times 30, this is minus 120 all over two times one, which is two. Um, keep going, let's simplify under the square root. So 100 minus 120 is negative 20. So I have a negative number under a square root, which means I am expecting a complex case. Now. I don't know if you guys, I mean, you might need to go back and refresh, but you need to be able to simplify the square root of negative 20. So there's an I situation there. And then a four and a five. And I use a four and a five because four is a perfect square. So you get two from the square root of four with an I from the negative and then square root of five left. So I did that kind of fast. If you need to practice that, I have a video that goes over that uh, more. So if you need to look at that, practice that, whatever you need to do. 10 plus or minus. So the square root of negative 20 converts into 2i times the square root of five. And this is all over two. Now we're comparing it to what we got before, which was this five plus or minus i times the square root of five. So I'm not done, which means, you know, obviously I'm not done because I can simplify. As long as everything is divisible by the same number, I can divide everything by that number. 10, 2, everything outside the square root, by the way. 10, 2, and 2 are all divisible by 2. So I'm going to divide them all by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5, plus or minus. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So i times the square root of 5 is left. Divided by 2, divided by 2 is 1 or 10 divided by two plus or minus this divided by two. Cancel that two on the bottom and I'm left with this, which is exactly what we got before. Uh, where was it, right? When we completed the square. Um, to each his own, 
one of some of you might prefer completing the square some of you might prefer quadratic formula but either one you still need to know both let's do this other example that we did we got the solution where we're these were our solutions right um by completing that obviously this was kind of ugly when we have a coefficient other than one in front of the x squared so let's do it using the quadratic formula. This is already in our form that we want it to be in, set equal to zero, standard form. So let's identify my a, my b, and my c. My a is the coefficient of the x squared, my b is the coefficient of the x, and my c is the constant. Write down my quadratic formula. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and plug in chat. The opposite of b, the opposite of negative 12 is positive 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And let's see what we get. So 12 plus or minus the square root of. The quantity negative 12 squared is positive 144. And so 4 times 2 is 8 times three is negative 24, right? Or minus 24, all over two times two, which is four, keep simplifying, 12 plus or minus. So 144 minus 24 is 120 under the square root. So that is a positive number under the square root, which means that we um, don't have a complex case. Uh, I'm going to simplify the square root of 120. We have to do that. And I think that, oops, think that four times 30, right, works. And I chose four because it's a perfect square. So I can go ahead and say that the square root of 120 is equal to two times the square root of 30. And that's all over four. Now, you know, technically you could leave it this way. Um, you should simplify a little bit more, um, the 12, the two and the four all divisible by two. So I'm gonna divide them all by two, which makes this a six, makes this a one and makes this a two. And this is my solution. Now it doesn't look like the solutions we got here because there's no you know number divided by here. So if I'm comparing it to this, you guys can leave it this way, but if I'm comparing to what I had before, you can say, well, six divided by two plus or minus the square root of 30 divided by two, because this is all over a single term, which makes this three plus or minus the square root of 30 over two. So you get the same thing, you know, sometimes it's dependent on how you want to represent your solution. You could do it this way or this way. Um, if you want to write them separately, this is three plus the square root of 30 over two, three minus the square root of 30 over two. You could use a quadratic formula or completing the square to solve these type of quadratic equations that don't factor and you can't jump into the square root property. You need to know both methods, but you can use either one. That's a preference unless you're asked to use a particular method, right? Um, but obviously they give the same result. So again, you have a quadratic in, uh, equation in front of you. What do you do with it? Well, if it's in a form that I can go straight to a square root property, I'm going to do that right, where I can isolate the constant on the right and the squared term on the left. If I can't do that, then I'm either going to factor. If it doesn't factor, and um, I want to make sure that you guys know that it has to be in this form where it's set equal to zero before I use any of these methods, factoring, um, completing the square or the quadratic formula. If it doesn't factor, then go ahead, complete the square or use the quadratic formula. But, you know, Actually, completing the square or the quadratic formula will work for, for any quadratic equation that you have, period. Factoring only works for those that factor, but it's faster to factor if it does factor. Okay, so anyway, leave me questions if uh, there's any confusion, um, and then good luck.